best friend, Crystal. And these two girls were joined at the hip. Ramona filled her days with baseball. She loved playing baseball. When she was
Street was really rough. Um, 
necessarily uh, popular because of what had happened to Melanie. It was popular because of who she was. Let me ask you this. He was quoted saying, received this much attention if she were a native woman who had been abducted. On January 27th, 1995, the RCMP got a tip from an anonymous caller saying that he had overheard someone talking about what had happened to Ramona. He said that she could be found in an area west of Smithers, and then the call ended abruptly. So police believed that this was a very promising lead, but investigators needed more to go on. The tip, while seeming to be credible, was too vague to really act on. later, two teens were out four-wheeling in this muddy clearing near Smithers. Snow had started to melt, and the field they were in was really muddy, and they ended up getting stuck. So they got off their four-wheeler and walked toward the edge of the woods, hoping to get, like, a big stick or something that they could ride the four-wheeler out of the mud with, but instead they found the body of a young woman. Beside the body was a yellow piece of rope and three white nylon cable ties. Leggings and a purple sweatshirt were also found nearby. Matilda Wilson, Ramona's mother, was summoned to the police station to ID the items found near the body, and the entire family ended up going to the police station. Her siblings, her cousins, aunts, and uncles, Crystal, her best friend, was also there, and they all saw as the clothes that belonged to Ramona were ID'd. They knew what this meant. The body that police had found was Ramona's. The thing that Ramona's mom couldn't figure out, couldn't get over, was the absence of Ramona's shoes. She had just bought these shoes for Ramona, and she wanted them back. So the family went out to conduct their own search in the area where Ramona's body had been found, looking for these pink and white high tops, but they were never discovered. Police said that Ramona's murder had been sexually motivated that she had probably been taken to the area near the edge of the woods where her body was discovered and killed, and she'd been left there until her body was found. Matilda buried her youngest daughter in the Smithers Cemetery, less than a mile and a half from the hospital where she was born. 
suggested foul play. They did, however, um, begin to work the case and investigate. They went back to the bar and interviewed people working there, as well as the people who had last been seen with Alberta. Um, according to reports, they found this cousin or described as a relative of Alberta's who had been at the bar and he was the one who was reportedly hosting the after party. Police said he was evasive and uncooperative, which is odd because if a family member is missing, usually people are trying to do anything they can to help find them. So this behavior is noted that this may be some red flags for police. Police felt like this relative was definitely a person of interest. In the meantime, the Williams family had been out searching for Alberta, but there was really no sign of her. Alberta was just gone. It was as if she had vanished. Um, which I still don't fully understand because she had gone with a group of people. So how had no one realized that she had been separated from them? On September 25th, 1989, some hikers found the body of a young woman along an access road near Highway 16. The young woman was laying face down in a ditch surrounded by rubble and debris. In the dirt and mud that surrounded her body were signs of a violent struggle. This girl had obviously fought hard for her life. The police were notified and when they showed up, they immediately taped off the scene. They began searching for evidence. Um, the water around her body was divided into different quadrants to try to keep track of evidence. They pumped out the ditch that she laid in. They poured over the ground with a metal detector. They took pictures and only after they had done all of that did they turn over her body. And as soon as they did, they knew who it was. This was the body of Alberta Williams. Usually, police wouldn't confirm the identity without a positive ID, um, either using dental records or some other manner. But in this instance, the family was notified right away. Alberta's body was sent to Vancouver for an autopsy. When she was found, she was wearing only a bra and a shirt. Now, forensics in 1989 were much less advanced than they are today. And police at one point, I guess, felt like they had a suspect, but they had no real evidence to arrest him. In the meantime, Alberta's family was grieving and it was particularly hard on Rena. This was the second daughter she had to bury. Our first one had been killed by a drunk driver in 1986. So the family took Alberta's body and buried her next to her sister, Pamela. It was a closed casket funeral. It had to be. As the weeks turned into months, Alberta's case went cold. At this time, in 1990, Prince Rupert Police had more than 500 violent crimes a year, so their attention just kind of had to turn to other cases. Criticism mounted from the families about the lack of attention or interest police showed their lost loved ones. In late 1995, police searched a house in Delka in connection with the murder of 